Hello besties, my name is Taiwo and you're welcome back to my channel today, Easy Sewing with Tyke. On the channel today is a detailed tutorial on how to make a six-piece arm opening says that bustier blouse with front zipper. So to everyone coming across the channel for the very first time, you're welcome. Thank you for stopping by. It's good to have you here. And to all my returning viewers, yes, returning viewers, thank you for coming back as well. I hope today is that day that you decide to subscribe, okay? Please do subscribe. Huh? Like this video. Help this video get recommended to as many people as possible, okay? And to all my returning subscribers, thank you so, so much. I do not take the support for granted, okay? I appreciate you all so, so much, regardless of your category. And if you're here to put on the notification bell, please do so to get notified when I post new videos. Thank you. Now let's get started. So for this tutorial, I'll be making use of my half scale princess that bustier basic bodies. I've gone ahead to draft it out. I have a detailed video where I explained how I went about this, but I will just quickly do a quick recap. So from here is the start point to here is the chest line to the bust point under bust and the waist. From here, here is the center front to this place is the shoulder divided by two. And from here to this line that you can see, here is the bust pan. Bust pan divided by two. And after putting that, starting from the bust point, I what I had to do the on the bust tightening. So taking out half inch here at the side close to the center front and one and a half inch at the side close to the center, at the side close to the side front. Then I went ahead to connect it to the bust point that way, then to the waist. Also from the bust point, I went ahead to connect it to the under bust and then to the waist. Then I came down by one inch, of course, for the shoulder slope. Then I came down by four and a half and here is five inch. Here is four and a half, here is five inch. Then I did this. I extended this the line that will be that I'll be cutting out with the side front by two inches and I connected it. Then I put in my bust measurement and my waist measurement. Here is the bust that by the time I take this bust that in, the back and the front will match up. So if you want to understand in detail how I went about this, then check the link in the description box. You'll be able to you be able to achieve this. So the only thing, the only alteration I will be doing here is to the back pattern because I want the back also to, to be a princess that. So what I will just do is to, I will just come down by five inches and I will just connect it like so. I've added half inch to the shoulder here for joining. I added half inch to the shoulder for joining. And the neckline that I'm using, lest I forget, the neckline is three and a half, three and a half by five for the front, three and a half by five, and for the back is three and a half by two, three and a half by two inches. So I'll just go ahead and label this one. So, and for this, I'll go ahead and label it B1 and B2. So at this point, I discovered that my phone was not recording the process of how I was able to transfer that pattern to fabric to cut out the front. But not to worry. Thankfully, we have not, I'm not going to have to cut out the back. So I'm going to use that fabric that I have on the table there to show you how I was able to achieve this from the scratch. But we won't be cutting it out because that will mean that I'll have double of my front pattern. So I'm just going to show you and I'll clean it off. So because I want mine to have the zipper at the front, that is why I am adding half inch at the center this way. If yours will not be having a zipper, please do not have this. You want to move your pattern this way. But because I want it to have a zipper, that's why I left this half inch. So what you just want to do after leaving the half inch, if you also have a zipper, is to extend the length of this. You know, this is a full blouse, but this pattern is half scale. And the waist, the half length that I have here is 17. And the full blouse that I'm working with is 24. But I'll be adding one inch to it, 25. Like so. I'll go ahead and hold it out. Afterwards, the next thing to do is to measure what I have here. Add, include the half inch allowance. I have three and a half. I'll go ahead and measure it here. And extend it as well. And extend it. The next thing you want to do afterwards is to come up from the waistline here by half inch. Just come up by half inch like so and hold it out. After which I'll go ahead and add half, half inch allowance all the way like this. 
So I'll go ahead and add four inches this way. After this line, after this line, I'll go ahead and add four inches, then half inches so it allowance. So in total, I have four and a half. So you here you can go ahead and, and add as much as six, but the minimum, the least you should add is three inches. Anything less than three inches won't won't be so beautiful in my opinion. But I'll make use of four. And I will add it half into a four and a half. Once you've been able to do that, the next thing to do now is to just connect it like so. The next thing to do now is to just cut it out like this, like this, like this. That was how I was able to achieve this. That was how I was able to achieve this. You can see. So here is how you want to place your pattern. You, you are not going to place your pattern this way because unlike the center front, where we added the extension the a shape extension at this side for this for this side front you are going to add it at this side and at this side you are going to add it at this side and at this side so you want to factor in the four and a half inches also before placing it so you don't want to place it like this no you want to place it like this factor in the four and a half inch like this before placing it so just like we did the first thing you want to do is to extend is to extend the the length of the blouse that you are working with so you just want to extend it this way after which i'll go ahead and come up by half inch like so on both sides half inch then i'll go ahead and add my half half inch sewing allowance now that i've done adding that i'll just extend this to meet the full length I will extend it here also to make the full length. Then I'll go ahead and measure out my four and a half inch like so. On both sides, I'll go ahead and measure out my four and a half inch also here. Then I would connect it like this. Note, while drafting my own pattern, I had already added my sewing allowance to it here. Here is my 2 inch sewing allowance. That is why I did not add any other allowance at the side. If your own pattern did not have any sewing allowance, then you want to remember to add your 2 inches or 2 and a half inch sewing allowance before adding the 4 and a half inch extension. Okay? So you want to remember to do that. So that was what I did to achieve this. You can see that it's the same thing. So go ahead and draft the back now. This time around, I'll make sure that I I'll make sure that I press the record button before starting. Now to cut out the back, we'll be starting from the center back. We'll be starting from the center back. So first thing first, increase the length to so your full blouse length. I've done that 25. That's the edge. Then the next thing to do is to come up by half inch here, like this. Then I'll go ahead and add half inch all the way. Extend this all the way like this. Or measure out what you have here. Three and a half and replicate it here. So I'll go ahead and measure out the four and a half inch. And I'll just connect it. So remember that my own zipper, my own zip would be at the front. That's why I'm cutting my center back on fold. That is why it is on fold because my zip would be at the front. I'd already add half inch to the shoulder for joining. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. But before cutting it out, let's do the side back. Let's do the side back. So also same thing. I've extended the length to the blouse length. And just like we did for the front, I'll just go ahead and extend this this way. And I will extend this this way. Come up by half inch on both sides. Come up by half inch on both sides. Adding half inch sewing allowance all the way. I'll go ahead and extend this by four and a half. Connect it. So again, I've added my sewing allowance on my pattern. This I've added my sewing allowance on my pattern, that's why you would not see me add any sewing allowance to this side. No, this is the side, so I'll just go ahead and connect it like this. It's time to cut it out now. Yeah. 
it. So I'll go ahead and use this pattern now to cut out the lining and to cut out the interfacing, cut out the wording that we'll be using to add structure to the bust. So I've gone ahead to iron my interface onto all the pattern, onto all the six pieces pattern. I've already also ironed the interface on my lining and I've already joined the lining together. You can see the lining for the front and the back, I've already joined it together. So remember I said that my own zipper will be at the front, so I'll go ahead and divide the center front into two that way. Also, I will divide the center front lining into two off camera. So now this is how I cut my wording. I did not allow it to extend all the way into the side because it is going to end it when I'm joining it at the side. So I stopped at the underbust area also. And you can see the wording that I cut out for the center front. I did not allow it to get all the way to the neckline. I came down by like two inches because it's going to end it when I'm about to turn the neckline with the lining. Even that side, I'm still going to trim it off because it's going to end it when I'm fixing the zip at that place okay so starting from the lower part and not the upper part i'll go ahead and join it using half an inch so using your pen or your chalk to mark out the half inch makes it easy to fix your bustier okay especially for beginners especially if you are not used to doing this it makes it so easy and another thing to note is that when you have any cause to move to move your bustier to adjust this as you can see that i'm adjusting make sure that your needle is always inside the fabric okay make sure that your needle is always inside the fabric that way it is easier to continue sewing on the same line on the same line so i'll go ahead and do this for both sides you know now that i've decided, divided the center front into two we now have two sides so i'll go ahead and do it for both sides so now this is what we have this is one part so after joining what you want to do is to confirm your sewing to see that it is neat and you are sewing on the on the right line on that half inches line it is correct then the next thing to do now i'll go ahead and trim off the wording at that um, center front that is going to end up when i'm about to fix the zip now it's time to trim it off so i'll go ahead and trim it off this way then i'll go ahead and trim off the excess wording also just as you can see in the video i'll trim off the excess wording after which i'll go ahead and notch it at the on the bust and at the bust point now we are done joining the front now it's time to move to the back joining the back too is the same process as we joined the front just go ahead and join all the pieces together using half an inch like so and make sure to notch it at the half length okay and also the front also you want to notch it at the half length to make it lay properly after which i'll just go ahead and iron it out i'll go ahead and open up all those seam lines with iron for both the front and the back then we'll come back to fix the lining to attach the lining so now before fixing the lining we want to eliminate that sharp v curve that we have after joining all the pieces together and to do that you just want to come up by one inch you can either fold it or open it up you just want to come up by one inch like so mark it then measure three and a half to the sides and co connect it like so to have a curved line okay you can either do it while it is folded that way or while it is opened it is actually the same thing so i'll just go ahead and do this on both the main fabric and the lining okay to eliminate that sharp v that we have over there so because of the type of the m finish that i want to achieve you see it by the time i'm done i'll go ahead and reduce the lining generally by one inch so when i get to that sharp v curve i'll just go ahead and put two inches there it's either you do it this way or you do the process that we did on the main fabric first then you generally reduce what you have on your lining by one inch okay so if you don't understand what i said previously you can go ahead and mark out one inch as you can see me doing this video just the same process we did on the fabric go ahead and cut it out then from generally on the end of the lining you want to measure one inch and you reduce it by one inch again okay now the length of the lining is one inch lesser than the length of the main fabric so now placing the right side of the lining facing the right side of the fabric we'll go ahead and sew it at the m line that we're using half an inch not to worry if the lining does not get to the edge of the fabric that way it is because we have reduced the length of the lining it's still fine just make sure that the midpoint of the lining matches up with the midpoint of the fabric
Now that we are done sewing the M, when you match it up at the armhole that way, you will see that the excess and color that we have is like half inch. So yes, that is what we want to achieve. We don't want the lining showing under this top. So you just go ahead and sew it at the side that way, making sure that it matches up at the armhole, okay, so that you have excess and color at the end. When I turn it out, you will see what I'm saying. So you just go ahead and sew it at the sides, on the two sides. So after sewing it at the side, I'll go ahead and sew it at the neckline also. Then I will not cheat on top stitch. Now I'm going to have to turn it out, see how it is inside. You can see that the Ankara is just coming up by half inch. So if this half inch is too small for you, if you want it to come up by like one inch, you want it to be that wide, you have to reduce your lining by one and a half, not one inch, okay? And please also factor it into the length of your top, okay? So at the end, instead of adding one inch, you want to add like two inches or one and a half, okay? So that you now have shortage, so that at the end of the day, your top will not be too short. So doing the same thing I did for the back, I will eliminate that sharp V curve for the fabric and I will also reduce the lining generally by one inch. So before fixing the lining, I will go ahead and attach my zipper because I want the zipper sandwiched in between the fabric and the lining. I, that's it. So you know already that at the end, we are going to sew it the lining by half inch and we are going to need another half inch for the turnover. So I'll go ahead and mark one inch that way and I will notch it. That is where I'm going to start fixing my zipper form. So I'll go ahead and fix my zipper now. So you can see how my zipper is placed. I'm starting from the end of the zipper because whatever I have left up there, I can always trim it off, okay? And I'm also sewing it using half inch, the half inch that I added when we were drafting. So now I'm going to fix the second side of the front also and attach it to the zipper using the same process I did to attach the first side. I'll go ahead and sew it all the way using half inch, making sure that I come up by one inch. So this is it. This is what we have. You can see how nice the zipper has been fixed. The stitch line is not showing outside. So yes, that is what I want to achieve. Now it's time to attach the lining. So fixing the lining now, just as the way we fix the lining for the back, just want to go ahead and sew it by half inch at the end that way. Now, after sewing it, I'll go ahead and turn it at the zipper area that way. You can just follow what I'm doing. So after turning it, I'll just go ahead and sew it by half an inch on that zipper area. That way I have sandwiched the zipper in between the fabric and the lining. So now I'll go ahead and open up the zipper. Then I'll trim off the excess zip that way. Please make sure that you open it up before trimming it, okay? So that you will not spoil the zipper. After which I'll just go ahead and sew it at the neckline using half an inch. Then I will notch it and I will top stitch. So this is this is what I have at the end of the day. You can see how neatly my zipper has been fixed. So this is what is most important to me. I did not sew it at the side. Okay, I did not finish off the side neatly like the way I did for the back. You can go ahead and finish off the side for yours, and then you turn it out from the armhole area. Okay, you turn it out from the armhole area. This zipper is an um open and closed, so you can always detach it. You can detach it so it will make it easier. Okay, so I'll go ahead and repeat the same process that I did for the other side. Now that I'm done with the other side, I'll just go ahead and fix the zip back. And this is what we have. The front is ready. See how beautiful it is already. So the next thing to do now is to iron this. After which, I'll join it at the shoulder using half an inch. So you can sew it that way and overlock it. Or you can enclose it neatly using this two method. Is either you open it up this way, making sure that the midpoint matches up like that. Then you want to go ahead and sew it. Once you sew it, it means you have enclosed it. It's going to come out neatly. Or you place it over each other this way, right side facing the right side facing each other, and then you go ahead and wrap one. You sandwich one into the other, just as I am doing right now. So I prefer this, the method I mostly use. So I'll go ahead and use this to join the shoulders. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to put in the bust measurement and the waist measurement. Then I'll be joining it at the sides together. Now the next thing I'll do is to reshape the arm O. So the first thing I'll do is to reshape that front arm O to match up with the back. Then I'll go ahead and alter the front arm O just the way 
just as we used to alter it when we are drafting the basic bodies okay i'll go ahead and deduct half inch from the front arm or i'll come up by two inches and remove half inch just exactly the way we used to um plot the arm over the front when we are drafting our bodies so i'll go ahead and do all of that now the next thing to do is to go back to the cutting table to cut out the sleeve and fix it so i've decided to go with an a-shaped sleeve so if you want to know how i was able to draft that upper part you want to check my video on how to draft a basic sleeve okay i have a detailed video on that already the link to it will be in the description box so what i'm just going to do is to my bicep measurement i'm going to add six inches that is the exact width that is the exact width of this fabric that i have on the table that is on fold and i'm just going to extend it that way so what i'm doing here is marking the full length you can see the way i'm moving the tape measure the full length i'm working with is um 20 and a half and the um the cap height is five so i'm placing my tape measure on five that way and i'm moving it um diagonally to measure out my full length because there is always going to be a curve at the edge that way okay so once i'm done doing this i'm just going to connect it with my ruler like like so after which i'll just go ahead and cut it out now i'll go ahead and fix the sleeve onto the top onto the body of the top okay then i would fold it at the m i'm not going to add lining to this sleeve then i'm going to join it at the side and that would be all the six pieces top is ready and that will be all for today thank you for watching thank you for staying to the end so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial i hope that you gained value from it i hope that you learned one or two things if your answer to all of this is yes then please like this video share it leave a comment for me engage let me know what you think okay and you can also connect with me on my instagram page at taiko underscore taiki too and if you're yet to subscribe please do not leave without doing so thank you and see you in my next video